Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 16 Beta 2 that I have here on my Pixel 9 Pro XL to show you everything new. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about my future videos. And now let's jump in. Today I uploaded these 12 new wallpapers inspired by Material U to the wallpapers by in-depth thick reviews app to celebrate Android 16 Beta 2. You will find the Google Play Store download link in the description. And now let's get back to the video. Starting with the build number, you will immediately notice that we are still impacted with the same bug that grays out the clock and the build number. But let's take a look at it anyways. It's PP22.250124.00. Let's start with the always on display and lock screen. And the first change I noticed is the new haptic feedback when you unlock using your face. It will give you a small haptic feedback along with the change in the animation. It's the exact haptic feedback you get when you unlock using your fingerprint. Now let's start a side-by-side -side comparison to better show you the differences. On the left I have beta 1 and here I have beta 2. And the first change I'm going to show you here is under the wallpapers and the style app. When you go to the color contrast, you will see that the maximized text contrast is now called text outlines but it works exactly the same. Under the widget speaker, we got two new changes. The first one is the smaller icons for system apps. For example, Android System Intelligence has a smaller icon with a white container around it, which didn't exist before. And the same applies to the battery. And when you scroll all the way down, you will see a new widget called Users that will allow you to switch between the users you have immediately from your home screen. But it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing as you see here when I make it smaller. This is how it looks. You still can scroll, but it's not ideal. I think Google needs to update it to look better in smaller sizes. From here, you can also jump right away to the user's settings. One more minor change. When I tap and hold on the home screen, you will see that beta 2 is always slower than beta 1 in showing the home menu. Moving to the notification shade, when you go to the history, you will see a slightly different design first. The background color is now more saturated, so you can better isolate between the background and the items. Then the separators is now small gaps instead of horizontal lines like before and the list is also narrower. And now let's take a quick break with today's sponsor before showing you the new changes under settings. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've been wanting to improve my content creation skills to level up my productivity and with classes and learning paths on Skillshare, it has been easy to learn. For example, as a content creator, I have plenty of classes to choose from, like social media, creative writing, film and video, productivity, and more. I personally signed up for the advanced video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro class by Jordi Van Put to learn some advanced video editing techniques that I wanted to know for a very long time. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts, that can help you take your career, skills, hobbies, or side hustles to the next level. And with Learning Paths, it becomes even easier. Learning Paths are curated sequential class collections for those who want to master a specific skill with plenty of options to choose from. What if we thought of our creative side the same way we consider our health and wellness? Creativity is a muscle. The more you exercise and build your craft, the more you grow in any creative discipline that excites you. That's what Skillshare is here for. It's all about making the choice to learn, grow, and develop a creative practice of your own. Flex into new skills on Skillshare and grow in all the ways you've wanted to. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today and let's get back to the video. Other than this, all the new changes are mainly under settings and I will start with the profile menu. When you go inside and scroll all the way down under the recommended tab, you will see this new item called Family Group that will allow you to share Google services, storage, and subscriptions with your family. And when you tap on continue, it will take you to your Google account and show you all other accounts you have so you can start your sharing. Under network and the internet, when you go to your Wi-Fi settings like this, and then scroll down a bit, you will see that the randomized MAC address is now called device MAC address. Under sound and vibration and then media, you will see that the show assistant media recommendation toggle is now gone in beta 2. Under display and touch, you will see that the extra dim is now located under the adaptive brightness toggle, but unfortunately it doesn't do anything and I don't have the same settings page 
I have on Android 16 beta one, which is located under accessibility. From here, I can set the intensity and also choose if I want to add the extra dim shortcut to the quick settings. The whole page is gone and I no longer also see the extra dim shortcut in the quick settings. All I can do here is to turn the toggle on or off and it doesn't do anything while in Android 16 beta one, it works just fine. Under storage, you will see one minor change. When you scroll all the way down, the Android version is now called Android Baklava instead of Android 15 like before. Under battery, you will see two new changes. First, things are organized differently. And when you go to battery share, you will see that the turn on automatically toggle is now gone. Under system, you will notice that the languages menu item is now called language and region. And when you go inside, you will see things are organized differently. Plus we got some new features. The first change here is the new category called more language settings that didn't exist before. And then when you scroll down, you will see here that we have a new option called region. And then we have the measurement system. And you can also adjust the temperature and first day of week that used to be under the regional preferences before. Google also removed the speech category and now it's a menu item. When you go inside it, you will see the same options we used to have. And the most exciting change in this menu is under gestures. Now the quickly open camera is called double press power button. And when you go inside, now you have the ability to choose between the camera or wallet instead of always opening the camera like before. But unfortunately, the feature is a little bit buggy and sometimes it locks the phone before opening the wallet. You have to be really fast or else, as you see here, it locks the phone. So I hope to see it working better in the future. And I also recommend if Google can show the card at the top of the screen and instead of showing the whole app like this, it will look much better. And the last change we have here is the removal of the container around the graphical representation around all the features listed under the gestures menu, as you see here. Under security and the privacy and then system and updates, I found that Google Play system update is April 1st, 2025, which is two months ahead, instead of Jan 1st, 25, like in beta one. So these are all the new features I spotted, but there are plenty of other improvements under the hood. And if you want to know more about them, I recommend reading this article from androidfaithful.com written by Mesha Rahman. He talks about improvements related to the Ultra HDR, uh, some of the uh, new features added to the camera API and so on and so forth. So I'm going to leave its link in the description if you want to know more. Now it's time to talk about the bugs I spotted in this build so far. And the first one is related to the clock widget settings page. As you see, it's always in dark theme, even though the phone is set to light theme. And as mentioned at the beginning of the video, the clock and the build numbers are in a very light gray color which is very hard to see. Another bug in the quick settings is I have to swipe twice to be able to dismiss it, as you see over here. The color change animation when you open the folders is a little bit laggy, as you see here, it takes a second to change to a white color, which doesn't look great. The game dashboard settings page is misaligned and it overlaps with the status bar. Under the storage menu, we still don't have the files app banner at the top, which is also a bug we have in beta one, but tapping on this area will still take you to the files app normally. Now let's talk about the performance and if it's worth it to install Android 16 beta 2 on your daily driver. My quick answer is no, because it's not as stable as you would think. Sometimes it works perfectly well, while in other times it does weird things. It might quit apps and the keyboard might disappear for some reason. So I don't recommend it for your daily driver, at least for now. And when it comes to the Geekbench scores, the numbers are not great either. I was getting better scores with beta 1 and the stable version of Android 15. So that's pretty much it for today. These are all the new changes I wanted to show you in Android 16 beta 2. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.